Please always consult with your physicians prior to making any changes to your treatment plan. Music is courtesy of Ryan Hamner. Welcome to Living with Scanxiety, the cancer podcast, a podcast geared to help you navigate the pediatric cancer world. As a mother of a child who battled a soft tissue sarcoma for over a year, your host, Rosaria Kozar, understands and will help guide you through your journey. She brings the knowledge of experts, families, survivors, and other organizations tied to the pediatric cancer world to your doorstep. Her mission is to inform, support, and promote hope for you and your family. This is where hope lives. This is where hope thrives. Together as one incredible psychological benefits to it and it affects their self-esteem and visual distraction there's there's medical actual medical you know connections behind what these tattoos do for these kids hi this is rosaria and i'm here with tyler stover and he is the ceo of hope versus cancer we're gonna find out all about it and it is one way to definitely raise the spirit of your kids. So stay tuned. And I'm so excited to welcome Tyler to our show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Most definitely. So tell me about Hope Versus Cancer. Hope Versus Cancer stemmed from um, multiple seeds that were planted in me. Um, I come from a family that gives back a lot. My great aunt who passed away not too long ago was a Catholic nun in the inner city of Chicago um, for over 70 years. Uh, Sister Mary Therese Fryman of the BVMs in uh, Maywood, Illinois. And uh, my mom, you know, by, by choice and by incredible opportunity, my mom was... Um, you know, a housewife, and that's what she wanted to do. And and but it didn't end with just her kids. You know, she got really involved, and she gave back to the schools and our churches. And um, you know, my family instilled a lot of good qualities in me, and I always wanted to give back in my own way, but I didn't know how. And through watching sports and football games and basketball games, um the the messaging my attention just grew um and my passion grew towards childhood cancer um you know there's there's a million worthy causes out there and i'll be the first to admit um you know that that people should follow where their heart goes and and, and um mine for me it was just children's cancer it really tugged at me so i knew that was my that was my cause that I wanted to, you know, contribute to in the fight versus. I didn't know how to give back, um, but um, shortly before Hurricane Irma, when um, it went through Puerto Rico, a girl battling an aggressive form of pediatric cancer was um, evacuated to Miami. She needed to continue her treatment, and we all know what happened to Puerto Rico. Loss of power, food shortage, you know, the whole nine yards. And coincidentally, we shared the same schedule. Um, I always seemed to find her going up the elevator, coming down the elevator with me. We would run into each other in the garage. And, you know, for some people in Miami, I'm scared. it's scary how friendly I am. But, you know, not too long after... Her and I had our own little greeting and we had our own like little handshake that we did. And um, it just broke my heart to see um, when she came back from treatment. And I remind you, she was going through a, a very aggressive uh, treatment to battle her, her cancer. And it just totally broke my heart seeing her in the elevators and she could barely look up at me to say hi. And, you know, she gave that extra effort, but, um, you know, she was in a bad place and going through a really, really dark time. And as a child, you know, there's that innocence there that, um, you know, it just really breaks your heart to see someone going through that. So, um, being in marketing and, and a creative person, 
I'm a sucker for a good point of sale. And Disney, I think it was Disney had these princess tattoos, temporary tattoos. And um, I remember back in my childhood, I don't, I still to this day don't like Cracker Jack, but um, I remember the opportunity to get a, a temporary tattoo in the Cracker Jack uh, box. And they sucked, but it was cool and I loved it. So I was like, you know what? Maybe these will cheer her up. And um, I presented them to the family and they, you know, encouraged me to put them on her. And when I peeled back the paper and I saw um, her facial expression and the change in her body language, it just opened up uh, my imagination and possibilities of, of what could be. And it just really sunk in to me and I just over days it just festered in me and it's all I could think about was how to grow this and how to uh you know how do I how do I make this happen and how do I get into a hospital and because hospitals amazing incredibly so are very private and very protective of kids um especially pediatric cancer um unfortunately there's a lot of situations where, you know, families get taken advantage of, kids get exploited. Uh, hospitals do an incredible job of doing that. So I started reaching out to some tattoo artists and I convinced them with nothing but a name, Hope versus Ken. I convinced some tattoo artists to, to make some drawings for me because I thought it'd be cool. What'd be, instead of just making them, why not have tattoo artists make them? Um, And then to be able to tell these kids, like, look, this was made by a tattoo artist just for you. Um, And, you know, some of them in the beginning, I had to pay them um, to do their, I liked what they did and I paid them, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 50 bucks to make me 10 designs. And I approached the University of Miami, um, Alex's place at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center to take a meeting with me. You know, I looked them up on their website and uh, finally I got a hold of who I think I should be talking to. And it wasn't, but he told me, hey, Tyler, um, you know, why don't you come down and we'll, we'll sit and talk about this. I showed up in a T-shirt and jeans and, you know, all-star chucks and he's wearing a, you know, suit and tie and looks incredible and all decked out and uh, we sat in a courtyard there and I just told them about how I came to that point and kind of what my vision was and how, how I wanted to, you know, help some kids battling cancer with this. And, you know, right away, his name is Danny Giannis um, at the University of Miami. And right away, he he was one of the first ones to tell me, like, you know, there was so much more potential for this. Um, on a much bigger scale. And, and with that being said, he was like, come on, let's go inside and, and put some of these on the kids. And we went around and um, put tattoos on maybe, I don't know, 15. It's a small clinic. It's an outpatient clinic too. Maybe I sat there for a couple hours and put tattoos on maybe 12 to 15 kids. The reaction blew away everything I, I thought it could be. And on a very, on a very uh, surface, superficial, you know, um, layer, it's just, you know, it's a cute concept. But when you dive into it more, um, there's incredible psychological benefits to it. And it affects their self-esteem and visual distraction. There's, there's medical, actual medical you know, connections behind what these tattoos do for these kids. And so I was like, wow, I'm really on to something. And, you know, that was fall of 2017. And that year, um, I think Christmas fell on a Monday. And I rushed to put together a GoFundMe. Um, or maybe it fell on a Sunday. I don't know. But that weekend, it was like the 24th, 25th. 23rd, 24th, 25th. And I did a GoFundMe and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this for a few days right before Christmas. Whatever money I can bring in to, to you know, help get this started. 
um, would be incredible because I was paying everything out of the tattoos and the domain and all that stuff. You know, it, it adds up and I was paying it out of my own pocket. And we raised, um, I think like around eight or $9,000 on the GoFundMe. And at that time of the year, you know, people are like, I'm tapped out. Like, um, you know, my wallet's done, my cards are maxed out, you know, that's it. And when we raised that much money, um, I knew, I really knew we were, we were onto something and something scalable and something that I could reach a lot of kids with. And so that, that after Christmas, I, I hit the ground running hard. And I built a website and I got some lawyers and we fast tracked our 501c3 and um, we just built our social media page and, and we got going at it hard. And the more and more I went in and worked with the kids um, and met with the parents and had conversations with Child Life Services and the doctors, um, I realized we weren't doing enough and, um, you know, (laughs) there's something about putting a tattoo on a kid battling cancer that has a port and they're sitting there badass, you know, with their shirt off, um, where you're kind of, you're, you're towing the line of, of like pushing the edginess and coolness. And I was like, you know what, these, these kids and these parents need a voice. So we started, you know, not holding back about being a voice for them and and spewing the truth and the incredible disparity, um, the sad disparity on funding that's out there. And we we still wanted to do more and we wanted to do more. And it was a beautiful thing that came together where when we were tagging artists that created – you know, a tattoo design and we would post a picture of the child, you know, showing their tattoo and we would credit the artist. At the same time, we were saying, you know, we need to do more. The artist, artists started reaching out to me and saying, I want to do more. And that's when we started funding pediatric cancer research as well. Um, So, you know, it's like our three headed dragon of, lifting the kids spirits, um, raising awareness, which we have some really cool stuff in the works, uh, for that. And then funding pediatric cancer research. Um, and it's grown in a very short time into what you see today. Um, even with COVID last year in 2020, we nearly raised $200,000. Um, we funded two research grants for $100,000 and $50,000. And, um, you know, things are only going to get bigger and better for us. And, um, you know, with the temporary tattoos and tattoo artists, the tattoo industry are incredibly passionate and loyal people. And, um, you know, when they find something worthy and they find something um, it was important for us to do everything with transparency and, and real validity. When they find something that kind of has that momentum and verification behind it, they are, uh, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with. And, you know, with my full-time job, I realized that from the get-go. And I knew if we, if we you know, did this right and we acted with responsibility and, and transparency that, um, this was going to snowball into something pretty big and what you're seeing today. Yeah. It's really amazing too. Your tattoos, they're not, like you said, they're not just simple Cracker Jack tattoos. They're really intricate and you can definitely see that there's a lot of thought and effort and, um, beauty behind them and I know you had told me the story about the young girl putting it on her head and and saying oh they're not they're looking at my tattoo they're not looking at my head and I could just see my son thinking that too take the focus off of uh, the negative and put a positive spin on it so uh, I think what you're doing is just amazing with the tattoos alone but then you added on the whole research bit it's just Man, really branched out. <laughs> You're awesome. Your hope versus cancer is great. I'll share two beautiful stories too about 
hope versus cancer to give people a little bit more of an insight. And one of them you alluded to, um, there was this girl named Zalia from uh, Phoenix Children's Hospital, and we, um, her mom reached out to us, and we, she's actually um, in a lot of our photos. Um, if you see the um, Rosie the Riveter photo shoot that we did, that was Zalia. Uh, mm. You know, unfortunately, she passed on, but um, and lost her, you know, battle with pediatric cancer, but. Um, she just absolutely loved our tattoos. And um, there were a couple that we had that were real horizontal in the configuration, and she would always put them on the side of her head. And that was the first time I had seen that. And I asked her mom, I, I said, why is she, can you ask her why? But then other girls started doing it too. And it wasn't because we were showing that photo of it because that photo wasn't public, um, you know, on our social media. But I, I asked her, can you ask Leah, like, why, why does she do that? And, um, you know, what, what's her reasoning behind doing that? And it, it was what you, you had said, you know, she felt like kids weren't pointing at her um, wondering if she was a boy or a girl or talking about her or uh, that her skin was a funny color or, um, you know, why she lost her hair. She felt that people were looking at her because of her badass tattoo. And I was like, wow, that is, that is incredibly powerful that, you know, this, this, I mean, we, we don't, they're not cheap, but you know, that this 10 cent piece of paper had that much impact on this girl and that we were able to ship those, you know, all the way from Phoenix to the Philippines and reach you know, uh, exponential amount of kids. I was like, wow, that is incredible. That's when I really started to realize there were a lot more psychological you know, benefits from, from these than just what you see of that momentary, you know, bliss. Um, and then the other one was how, was how this was going to bring everyone together, um, worldwide. And, um, in 2018, it was the world cup and, um, you know, we had sent a bunch of tattoos at that time. We were sending out a ton of tattoos. Just, you know, that was the front load of our, of our funding was to get these tattoos out there. Um, and this Mexican girl, I had gotten close with the mom and she called me one day and told me the story. And um, she told me how, people listening also have to understand that, you know, and you, you know, this, that one day, one minute, they can be skipping and jumping and playing. And then the next minute it's like a fever and, you know, they're screaming and crying. You don't, you don't know what's going on. And um, this little girl started crying in her room and hysterically. And the mom ran in there and she's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And once she got her to settle down, she kept saying, like, Seeker, Seeker Keeper is going to be so upset. And she's like, what are you talking about? Seeker Keeper? Seeker Keeper? She, mom's like, what are you talking about? Well, finally, she pieced it all together. Um, she had fallen in love with this one mermaid tattoo design. And I had told them this was designed by a, a German tattoo artist. And I couldn't remember the artist's name, but I remember her Instagram handle, and it was Seeker Keeper. And so I told the little girl that, you know, this was designed by this German tattoo artist, and her name is Seeker Keeper. And, you know, she designed it for little girls just like you because, you know, she just wanted to cheer you up and bring some light, you know, into your life and, you know, give you, give you some positive energy. Well, the girl, again, is Mexican, and um, Mexico had just upset Germany in the World C the opening match of the World Cup, and um, Germany 
was like the favorites again. Um, I think they were, might've been the defending champions. And um, this little girl was, while the rest of her family was like celebrating the, the win by Mexico, this little girl was like moved to, um, moved to tears of, of like, all she could think about was how the tattoo artist was going to feel. She didn't even care that her team had won. She felt so connected to this artist. She didn't even know that she was moved to hysteria that this artist was going to be upset and crushed that her team had lost. And I was like, wow, that is so powerful of how it can connect. And, you know, we've, we've tagged tattoo artists of kids that have worn their tattoos and artists have also been so moved, you know, they start following the kid and they start following their journey. And several artists have reached out to me and they said, Hey, Tyler, I just want to let you know. And I I don't want to mean to like step outside my boundaries or on your toes, but my, my tattoo shop is hosting a fundraiser, um, you know, for so-and-so and and we're going to give the money, you know, to help them pay some of their bills and, you know, their housing. And it's like, man, that is incredible. You know, my job is, uh, you know, um, it's not done by any means, but like, this is, this is what I want. You know, I don't, I don't need to, every check doesn't need to come through us and go to the hospitals, you know, in the research centers, you know, if this is what we bring, you know, my, like at the end of the day, I'm happy. So um, with those being said, those are just fuel for us to keep going and pushing and and really grow this. It's a complete domino effect, it seems like, which is great. Yeah, it had a real organic and natural growth to it. You know, once, once those first couple doors opened and, you know, there was that, Again, I'm, I'll circle back to validity and verification, and um, that plus that people are so visual when they started seeing it. It wasn't just me, you know, telling them, "Hey, you know, this is what I want to do." Once they saw, then then it all became real, and it all became it came together like very fast. That's awesome. So we're going to wrap up for time's sake. So I have a couple of fun questions for you. You can answer them. We'll start off easy. If you could summarize your life's mission, you only get one sentence. It can't be a run on. What would you say? My life mission. Um, my life's mission is to impact people for the greater good by satisfying um, my creative cravings. Um, And I'll leave it at that, but I'll explain it too. You know, I just, I, I, I'm not driven by anything by, but just creating things and um, being part of a creative process. And, you know, I hope that Hope vs. Cancer grows to a point where it outgrows me as a CEO because then I've done my job and getting it to that point. Um, but all of Hope vs. Cancer, everything you see, the social media, the website, you know, that was all me creating it. But that was driven by passion, you know, and I just want to impact people, make people smile um, and ultimately, you know, raise some eyebrows to get the right people looking at pediatric cancer saying, Hey, you know, we need to focus our efforts on this. All right. So, um, next question, if you could read minds or tell the future, what would you do? If I could read minds or Or tell the future, I would tell the future. Um, sometimes I don't want to know what people are thinking. You know, (laughs) I'd rather, I'd rather, have it the way I, I think it is, you know, um, you know, cause if, if you can see the future, you can ultimately, you can voice some opinion and change things. You know, I wouldn't spin anything to my benefit, but, um, you know, there's, I think there's an opportunity if you know the future to, uh, help the greater good. That's That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time and call to action. Call to action. You can go to hopeversuscancer.org, H-O-P-E-V-S, cancer.org. You can donate uh, on the website. You can go to our beautiful 
uh, Instagram page again, which is hope versus cancer. Um, see some of the incredible kids that we're helping uh, worldwide. And you can click the link in our bio on Instagram. There's some really cool that's updated continuously. Um, you can donate in there. You can um, enter sometimes to win incredible tattoos and also help our, our fund our mission. You can go on Amazon and look up Hope Versus Cancer, uh, temporary tattoos, Hope Versus Cancer stuffed animal. We have cool stuff on there, Amazon Prime. Again, all that money goes to our mission. Um, you know, follow us on Instagram. You can stay up to date on tattoo conventions we'll be attending. Um, you know, reach out to us. If you think you know a tattoo artist that might like to join our mission or give back, um, please, you know, uh, let's continue this momentum, continue spread that ripple effect. And, um, you know, these kids, they deserve the world. And, um, you know, we're, we're kind of falling short when it comes to pediatric cancer. For sure. Well, thank you for all you do for the kids. My pleasure. Thank you for tuning in to Living with Scanxiety. Please subscribe to hear more informative discussions like today's. Music is courtesy of Ryan Hamner. 